You're every beat of my heart The river running through my veins In the air in my lungs Every fiber of my being You're every beat of my heart The river running through my veins In the air in my lungs Every fiber of my being Yes, you are, you are, you are And a smile on my face Knowing you my one and only you are Yes, you are Blessed with your grace and a smile on my face Knowing you my one and only you are Yes, you are You're every beat of my heart River running through my veins in the air in my lungs Every fiber of my being Yes, you are, you are, you are Yes, you are Why don't you say this after me? Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit Why don't you come on me? Right now. right now, I'm so expectant, I'm so expectant that you're going to speak to me, and I'm ready. I am supernatural, and I'll say this in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Right. Just want to start, kick off this morning. A couple of things. When we were praying this morning, uh, Mikhail got a picture of knotted hair, and the knot being undone. And I think that's quite amazing, because if you feel knotted or tangled or tangled, I suppose is the word, God's going to untangle you this morning. Holy Spirit is going to work in your heart, and there's going to be an untangling of problems and whatever it is that you're waiting to be untangled. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And uh, I actually got a picture. This is crazy, okay? But... In Revelation, it says that Jesus is the ride on the right, white horse. So I just sense this morning that he's going to ride <laughs> around here on his horse, and he's going to create 
chaos. So if it's a bit chaotic this morning, don't be scared. It's Jesus on the white horse. It's okay. Blazing eyes of fire around this place. So let him touch your heart. Be ready for the unexpected. And ask Holy Spirit, what is it for me this morning? What is my take home this morning? And yeah, we were just, uh, Peter and I were talking this morning about the men's breakfast yesterday. And God did something amazing yesterday. It was like we can't put our finger on what happened, but something happened. And Dagwood actually gave a testimony and in God's planning in his life. And it was just, it touched the guys, I can tell you. So God is ready to, t- to touch you this morning. So don't think what happened yesterday is just for yesterday. It's also for, for this morning. Anyway, just a few announcements. So not next weekend. The weekend after is a big weekend. Take note. Listen, especially guys. You and Bra, come and join us. It's a lack of bra under the trees. And you bring your own meat. Do we have to bring salads? What does this say? No salads. The church is going to supply salads and rolls. You can bring drinks, but sorry, no beer, no wine, cool drinks, okay, no alcohol. And then on Sunday, the 19th, so that's the that's 17th, half past five here at church under the trees at the back. I think it's the trees at the back. And um, then Thanksgiving Sunday on the 19th is our Thanksgiving ser- service. And I think every single one going from there to there has got something to be thankful for. To God for. So I just encourage you to put it around, spread it around, and, and invite your friends. And, you know, God is so great. He's so, such a good father to us. And it gives us a chance to, for us, to just worship him and, and give him thanks and, and praise. Are there any visitors here that have never been to, to VFC? We'd just like to welcome you and give you some details. Just put your hand up if you have huh, any family. Well, you need to invite some friends, I think. Yeah. Next Sunday, I want to see a whole lot of hands up there. Right. Oh, yeah, and then there's coffee and tea. Don't miss out on that either. Like you missed out. Whoever never came to the men's breakfast yesterday, they missed out. I can promise you. We had such a good food. There's lovely coffee next door there. And, uh, yeah, come join us. It's really as good. And, uh, yeah, God wants us to fellowship, I think. Anyway, I just want to read something out of Romans to kick us off as we go into worship. And I'm reading out of the NLT, so it is a bit different in the NLV. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of, but of living a life of goodness, okay? NLV says righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So a third of the kingdom is peace. What Jesus said in, in John, he said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave you. So the key is Jesus is peace. Then he gets crucified on the cross. He comes back to his disciples and he appears to them. And he says, peace be with you. He says it again in the same meeting, peace be with you. So I would sense that if a third of the kingdom is peace, everyone in here this morning should feel peace. As, as I say, peace be with you, and you take that on, it is Jesus is peace. And I think that's one of the keys, as I know the the Roger family and Larissa and them have been through a tragic time this this last week, and Kerry especially said she sensed the peace of God. So even where there's tragedy and heartbreak, God is in it. God is in it. God's in your situation. I don't know all your situations, but I can tell you one thing. One third of the kingdom is peace. Others joy, others joy, and joy you need in the battle, not at the end of the battle, in the battle. Joy of the Lord be my strength. So this morning, as you worship and let go of yourself, just remember remember that. Joy is one third of the kingdom, peace is one third, and righteousness. We're not righteous with what we do, we're righteous through Jesus. And so that's the key, just let go this morning and worship God, just work to worship God. And I hand over to the worship team. When I 
stumble down You're always there to fix my crown You're nudging me in the right direction For your kingdom's purpose and perfection You are the pillar of my life My rock of strength My fortress of protection My compass of direction You're every beat of my For now and forever Made me in your perfect image I'm in awe of you Freed me from fear Hunger sustain You are the truth The light, the way You're every beat of my heart The river running through my a smile on my face Knowing you my one and only you are Yes you are Blessed with your grace and a smile on my face Knowing you my one and only you are Yes you are Your every beat of my heart The river running through my Father, you are everything, absolutely everything, every fiber of my being. That's who you are. Life in the trenches, hard and tough. The enemy attacks, it's getting rough The fight is on The fight is on Climb in this mountain, water be free From fear, doubt and anxiety The pain is real The pain is real My king steps onto the battleground a crown of victory My king steps on to the battleground Wearing the crown of victory His Spirit declares the Lord We're on our knees We're on our knees Our praises draw The enemy falls We're not alone We never were Our hands held high Our hands held high And my king steps on to the battleground Wearing my crown of victory 
Okay, let's stop. When I was this little boy in, in, in primary school, we used to do these movies uh, where we'd sit in the hall. It's those reels, those big reels, and they would have the Lone Ranger. And every time... the <laughs> You guys are not uh, not participating, portraying your victory. When when the Lone Ranger came onto the scene, you couldn't contain those little boys. We were up on the stage. We were jumping up and down. We were besides ourselves because our hero came into the battle. You've got your own battle. Now you're in this ring and you look back and there... (laughs) Where is your, your guy in the ring? It's not, it's not just any guy. He's the king of kings. And now you're getting a beating. Now he steps into the ring. Huh? Isn't that victory? See that. He steps into your ring. And he says, enough's enough. There's no white towel that's been thrown in. No. Now, together, you beat up the enemy. That's where your victory lies. The cry of victory, it's, it, it says here the cry of victory. Let's hear that cry of victory. You become what you worship. Your fiber, your being changes when you worship. You become like Christ. The enemy cannot take Christ on. He runs away like a dog. My king steps in. My king steps onto the battleground, wearing the crown of victory. My king. My king steps onto the battleground, wearing the crown of victory. the world but it couldn't fill me man's empty praise and treasures that fade on ever and then you came along woo, and put me back together and every desire I'm here in your love Oh, oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you, Lord There's nothing, nothing is better than you Oh, oh, there's nothing better than you Oh, there's nothing 
not afraid to show you my weakness. My failures are flawed. I've seen them. You still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace can find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better. You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn graves into garden you turn lawns into army you turn graves into highways you're the only one who can you're the only one who can goodness satisfies it makes me thirsty for more I'm so aware of my need for you I'm hungry for your presence Lord oh father we're just hungry for your presence we're just hungry for your tangible presence father your word is truth and your word is full of miracles the word tells us where you appear and you step into a situation. You bring good news. You bring peace. You bring healing. And Father, we're so hungry for that presence. We're so hungry for that healing. We are so hungry for that good news. Thank you that you are true to your word. 
Thank you for your goodness, for it's satisfied. Lord, your goodness satisfies. It makes me thirsty for more. I'm so aware of my need for you. I'm hungry for your presence, Lord. Oh, Lord, your goodness satisfies. Makes me thirsty for more. I'm so aware of my need for you. I'm hungry for your presence, Lord. I'm hungry for your presence, Lord. Oh Lord, your goodness. Oh Lord, your goodness satisfies. Makes me thirsty. I'm so aware of my need for you. I'm hungry for your presence, Lord. Oh Lord, your goodness satisfies. It makes me thirsty for more. I'm so for your presence Lord I'm hungry for your presence Lord I long to be filled with longing I thirst for a greater thirst and show me your glory O oh Lord my God filled with longing I thirst for a greater thirst and show me your glory O Lord my God stir up desire in me and stir up desire in me I long to be filled with longing I thirst for a greater thirst And show me your glory, O Lord my God Stir up desire in me I long to be filled with longing I thirst for a greater thirst And show me your glory O oh Lord my God, stir up desire in me, stir up desire in me, and stir up desire in me, oh stir up desire. your God is with you and he is mighty to save he will take great delight in you he will quiet you with his love He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord 
Zephaniah 3 verse 17 says everything that this verse says. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord rejoices over you with singing. He's with you. He's mighty to save. The Lord your God is with you, and he is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. Will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing, singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. Father, we pray for your spirit just to roam freely. We pray for your spirit to touch this morning. We thank you for the healing that's coming. We thank you for broken hearts that are mended this morning. We thank you for tears of joy this morning. And Father, as you sing over us, as you speak through Charles this morning, we thank you for a mighty word. We thank you for Lord, that you always say what we need to hear, Amen. not what we want to hear. Amen. Father, I pray that there's alignment, that your spirit will align us with your word this morning. We thank you for truth. We thank you for power in your word. We thank you for life that your word brings. We thank you for the hope that your word brings. And Lord, as your breath just breathes into us and you take us by the hand, we can face anything. We thank you for victory. Thank you for life. And we just worship your beautiful, beautiful name. 
In Jesus' name. And his church said, Amen. And his church said, Amen. And his church said, In victory, Amen. Amen. You may sit down if you want. just sense that Holy Spirit wants us to just rest in His presence for a while, just to, to rest as He rejoiced of us and Father God sang over each one of us and lifted our hearts, saying just breathe in, breathe me in and breathe out all the junk. Breathe in Holy Spirit, breathe out. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Father, for your spirit that you blow through this place. Blow your spirit through this place. Receive his spirit. We receive, Lord, we receive your spirit. The same spirit that, that, ro- that rose you from the dead, Lord Jesus. We spe- that spirit is in us. And we just receive it as you blow it over us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We exalt you. We lift you on high. The King of Kings. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We just we just praise your name. Praise your name. Pour out your spirit on me. Pour out your spirit on me. Praise be to you, O Lord. Pour out your spirit on me from now to everlasting. And yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness. And yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness. Pour out. Pour out your spirit on me. Praise be to you, O Lord. Pour out your spirit on me. From now to everlasting. And yours, O Lord, is the greatness. And yours, O Lord, is the greatness. And the power and the glory and the majesty and splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. And the power and the glory and the majesty and splendor for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Pour out your spirit on me. Praise be to you, O Lord. From now to everlasting, your O Lord is the greatness. O yours, O Lord. Is the greatness. God, we give you thanks and praise. 
your glorious name we give you thanks and praise your glorious name god we give you thanks and praise your glorious name your glorious name Thank you to the worship team. Thanks for taking us into a deep place this morning. And uh, yeah, your hearts were touched. That's great. If they weren't, there's still a chance. We're going to take up uh, tithes and offerings. You must maybe wonder why, why do we do this? Who, who, where does this come from? I'm going to read from Malachi. It's actually God's instruction to us of what to do. He says this. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. The storehouse is a church, and you in VFC, so bring all the, all the tithes into, into VFC so that there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open up, this, listen to this, I will open up the win windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great, you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. And as far as I know, that's the only place that he says, test me in this. So test him in this. Tithe is normally people speak of 10%, but offerings are something different. So tithes and offerings. And so as we bring our tithes and offerings, Jesus said that we need to come with a cheerful heart. We, he wants a cheerful giver. So may we give freely this morning and with a cheerful heart. Amen. <laughs> Everybody okay? You're having fun? You're enjoying yourselves? You're relaxed? Be relaxed because I'm going to call Charles up now to come and bring a word. And as Charles comes up, I'm just going to ask you all to stand. Why don't you all stand? Just say this after me, Holy Spirit. I'm so expectant this morning. That the word that Charles brings is going to touch me deeply. So my ears are open. I'm totally focused. I send any distractions back. And I'm ready. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, family. Well, this morning, um, I'm just going to share a few thoughts like I always do. And <clears throat> as I was meditating on what to share, um, I, I, I felt strongly about the, I don't know, I just kept on getting a picture of potholes. And I'm saying, God, what are you trying to tell me? Um, because, as we all know, potholes are not exactly the end thing. And it's not exactly a part of what we enjoy, but yet we, we have it, right? We have it in our country. Uh, when we travel our roads, sometimes they come as a surprise, and other times they, they're visible. So as I was just meditating on that, I think my message's title is something with bottles. <laughs> Watch out for the bottles. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> She's my title engineer. <laughs> and just something we all can relate to, because I, I'm not talking necessarily now literally the bottles that we see in the roads, but I'm talking about bottles in our life. 
And just just meditating on that, I, I began to realize that we can experience it on a daily basis. We can experience it anywhere, anytime, while we're on the move. You actually don't experience hitting a pothole when you're not moving. It's only when you're moving that you sometimes, as I said, by surprise or it's hidden or it's visible, uh, you can hit that thing or you have to find a way to negotiate around it so that it doesn't become a destructive thing to you. And the thing that, uh, you know, if you hit that thing hard enough, sometimes you can put yourself out of alignment. And that's the engineering of the enemy. It is not the engineering of God. God is not the one who creates the pothole. But God does create the navigation that we can use concerning the potholes in our life. And so for me, it's, it's, it's something that, you've heard me say this many times, bless God, you never have a problem. Uh, you're really a wonderful people. But when they do come, sometimes they can come hidden, sometimes they can come unhidden, and sometimes they can come very quick. And you know what's difficult is like, if it's rained hard, that pothole is, is not that visible because it looks just like a puddle in the road until you decide to drive through it. And you find yourself in a situation where you get jolted. And that's not a nice feeling. Because your first concern is normally my car. <laughs> that's where most men will go. But the other concern is what is it going to do to the process and the journey forward? One of the things that, as I began to meditate on this, and I said, Lord, what, what are you saying? What do you, what do you mean? And one of the things he said to me was this, you can never negotiate your journey without Holy Spirit. This might sound simple to you today. I actually, I, I, I was struggling with words because we hear words all the time. You hear so many similar words from here all the time. But there's life and death in the power of words. Because it's something that you speak. When you speak a word, you're either creating death or you're creating life. And the Bible says you will eat the fruit of what you create by words. I don't know about you, but I, I've got to tell you this. You know, we all know Carl has got the gift of communication. I'm being sarcastic. He has. When Carl and I first started out, we shared an office. <laughs> and I was sitting like this, and Carl was sitting over there. And Carl began to just unfold. I think I'd been, well, I can't remember Carl. But Carl just began to unfold and just share his heart and talk. And I, I was sitting in my chair looking at him like this, listening, and eventually I just heard this, Charles, wake up! <laughs> I had totally fallen asleep. <laughs> Soothing voice. High back chair. Yeah, high back chair is true. You know, maybe you should... Uh, make money like that so people can fall asleep. Just talk. <laughs> you know. I'm teasing you, buddy. But <laughs> when, when we're in a situation with words, sometimes when you hit a pothole, it depends what comes out. It could either be Greek or Hebrew or, or something else because of the irritation that hits you immediately when you hit that thing.
the Lord said to me, he said, son, you will never navigate the potholes in your life healthily without my spirit. Richard, what you did this morning was powerful. People might think you're a bit nuts. We know you are. That's okay. The Bible says, I'll be a fool for Christ. But do you know, people, that spirit means breath? Just want to put this in brackets. The, the Hebrews would never say the name of God because it was too holy, too majestic. And you know what his name is? Yahweh. Listen to it in the context of breathing. And you wake up in the morning and you take your first you're calling him. You're saying his name. It's a powerful thing. And the Spirit of God comes sometimes like the wind. He's the breath of God. He's the ruach. And I want to tell you now, you cannot live your Christian life without breathing with him. If you think you can, go ahead. But I want to tell you this morning, I believe the Holy Spirit is underlining, and so is Jesus underlining the reality of our way forward cannot succeed without Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that empowers you. He's the one that strengthens you. But the most beautiful thing on the, of the contrast is this. The Word of God says, when I am weak, then I am strong. That doesn't make sense, man. That's not logical. When I am weak, then I am strong. What does that mean? When I sense my weakness, when I know my weakness, when I'm feeling weak, and I call out to him and say, Holy Spirit, you are the resurrection life in me. You are the one that, that dwells in me. My body is your temple. You alone are my strength. And as I walk with you, listen to you, allow myself to be guided by you, not only do I grow and progress, but I navigate the journey with you in a way that bears fruit to the glory and the honor of your name. If you think for one minute, you're the one, you're it, you'll accomplish it, you'll make it happen, I'll show you, you're in for a rough, rough ride. I can do all things by myself. What does the word say? I can do all things through, through Christ. Who does what? Strengthen me. Through him, by him, with him, in him. And when Jesus said in John, listen, guys, if you ever you want to get a beautiful picture of Holy Spirit, read the gospel, John 14, 15, 16, where he so explains who Holy Spirit is, what he's going to come and do, what he's all about, and where he's going to take you. And I don't have the time to read all of that this morning. But the thing that I do know, and I am so convinced of with all my heart, is that the more I meditate on these things, the more I see the, the temptation that the devil creates in our life for the pothole of religion. As long as I do my devotions, as long as I read the word, as long as I go to church, as long as I do all these things, so God can tick. That's not doing it in his strength. I need him. Oh, I need him. 
We used to sing as a little boy. We used to sing in our church. Every hour, I need you. Every hour. Every minute. And you know what? It's not automatic. It's applying our faith. It's persevering. It's, it's, I love what Patch always says. It's not trying. It's practicing. 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 Practicing his presence. I don't have to wait for a Sunday morning when the worship music is so cool and so moving and the air cons are on and everything is wonderful and everything is going right that I'm so at that moment vulnerable or not vulnerable, susceptible to say, oh yeah, I can feel your presence. One thing you need to understand, when we're together like this, there is a release of a corporate anointing. Corporate anointing. But when you walk out that door by yourself, you need to walk, can I put it this way, in the individual anointing that you carry. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I want to encourage you with this first thing. Stay. I'm so afraid to say this because, again, it could just go, <laughs> words. Stay in the word. I want to put it like this. Begin to discover the word of God for your life. Maybe that makes it more interesting. Discover the word of God for you. I, I, I just, you know what got me to this was when Jesus was walking around and he came across a group of Bereans. Now the Bereans were known for studying the word really well. And Jesus, excuse me, makes a statement. He says, you have studied the scriptures. And you have studied them well. Now, do you think that's enough? He says, you have studied the scriptures. You have studied them well, but, whoops, hello? You never found me. You can know Genesis to Revelation. You can know your concordance. You can know your maps at the back. You can quote reams of scripture, but if you do not find him, all you have is philosophy. Study the word. And, and, I, and, you know, don't talk to me about studying. We've got some varsity champions over here this morning. They love the word study. <laughs> Makes them jump up with joy. Hey, I'm going to study. When I was at school, not that I can remember much. That was a very unfamiliar word to me. <laughs> I didn't like it. I still don't. But it's not what I like or what I don't like. It's what's going to benefit my life. And I don't ever want to study the word of God and hear him say, Charles, why didn't you find me? Because I am the Word. The Word is not ink on paper. The Word is life. The Word is Him. He is the Word. To deal with the potholes on your journey, begin to discover what the Word of God says to your life. D, can we, uh, Di, whatever your name is, can, can, can we have that first scripture up, please, Psalms? I hope it's the right one. Rich, will you read it, please? Your lamp, it's like your word, the lamp, the lamp, the lamp. Your, what? Is a lamp unto my feet. You know what that means? He throws light to where I am right now. He's shining on my present situation. He's shining on my present. If I go to his word, if I discover what he 
thinks and says and feels about my present situation. It will light up my life. What's that song? You light up my life. And then it says what? Besides your present moment, it says, and it's a the way forward. If you don't start discovering his word for you, you're going to stumble and not see the potholes and fall in them. Church, I wish I could say what I really want to say, but I'll get into trouble. I sometimes think God gets so frustrated with his church when he has provided everything and there's nothing more he can provide and we go fiddling in other places to try and find the answer. We go scratching everywhere else to find it. Listen, men. Your wife is more valuable to you than you know. Because when you can't find it and you ask her, she'll tell you where it is. (laughs) It's not inside. It's on top. (laughs) Maureen says to me, I said, where is this? She says, you're not looking. Look again, I said, no, I'm telling you it's not there. What does she do? She gets up and gets it. (laughs) Now, men, that's another way you can play with this thing. (laughs) But it's discovering the word, guys. It's discovering his word for you. Not just a chapter and a verse. It's discovering his word for you. That's one of the ways that I want to say, and probably the foundational way of us to progress in our journey with him and not become, not fall trapped into a trap of the potholes. Potholes come in all different sizes. They come in all different places. They come unexpectedly, and sometimes you can see them. But I want to say this to you this morning, that When you see things like this, you need to not only get into his word and discover it, but you need to strengthen your communication with him, one-on-one. Another word that we so glibly use is prayer. Just, Just communicating, God, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. You know, it fascinates me when I hear people, I, listen, none of you are like that. But I sometimes in past have heard people pray the most profound prayers that sound so, oh, hallelujah. But in the heart, there's other words. And guess what? God sees your heart. God hears your heart. He doesn't hear your, your words. He, are you with me? He looks here. He doesn't look here. He looks into the heart. And if I want to avoid the potholes in my life, and if I want to be an overcomer on these situations, I need to be able to say, I'm going to communicate with you. What do you think, Dad, about this situation? Father, how do you see this? But you know what the thing is? So often we can look for scriptures as an answer to a problem, and that's not wrong. Hello? But often it's an exercise. It's not from the heart. And if I'm making sense or not. So in in order to protect, we, we need to protect our minds. We need to protect what's around us. How many of you are very familiar with the word distraction? Anybody never, ever, ever experienced distraction? Oh, I see your hand at the back. That's wonderful. 
distractions. We live with them, man. They come every second. They come every day. Stuart, it is you sitting in the front there, isn't it? Or am I seeing wrong? Thank you for the distraction. Because as I got up here to speak, I saw him and all I went to was his YouTube channel. Now, what would have happened to the message if I lingered there? I could tell you some funny stuff. <laughs> what would have happened if I lingered there? I'm not saying you're a distraction. But you could be. So, <laughs> what I want us to understand this morning, and these are real things. These are, these are, this is life. Distractions come. What are we going to do about a distraction? It's what we do with our thought process that handles a distraction. It's like emotions. You know when people say, I couldn't help it. Talk, man. You can help it. Because you have not taken authority or taken into reins the emotion that's rising up in you at that moment. Boy, did I lose it yesterday. Confession time. I was with somebody... And you're not know, coming out of, out of the spa at the back. There's that circle. And this guy was coming down, and we were going around this, but this guy didn't stop. He just went for it. Now, what does the law say? Give way to your right. This guy kept on coming, and the driver that I was with just kept on going <laughs> because your expectation is you're going to stop. This blessed man. <laughs> decided to continue to put, just go. We, if we didn't break in time, we would have rammed him. Before I knew it, I was preaching at him. <laughs> and as, as he drove further on, I could say it was ND, I thought, aha. Uh -huh. As he drove further on, he would break and, you know, just trying to obviously stir it. And as we got to the robots there by whatever they are, I knew he was going to Durban. So he turns his window down and he's hanging out. So I look at him and I went, bye. <laughs> I don't know if that really diffused his feelings, but... I just thought to myself, how quick are we with emotions? How quick? And if we don't practice how to deal with them, we're going to hit the pothole. And we can make the pothole bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we sink in it. Potholes don't just <laughs> constant traffic over the thing. What happens? It starts to disintegrate. It starts to break. Now, there are some places where there's a sinkhole. But you hear what I'm saying to you? Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Your word is a light unto my path. I need you. I need to communicate with you. I need, as a matter of fact, here, yeah, I want to just suggest something that would be really great for you. Start praying by leaning on Holy Spirit and not your experience and not just your knowledge. When you're going to the time of prayer, say, Holy Spirit, what are we going to pray for? No, I can share with him how I feel. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is our whole aim? is to be led by him, to be guided by him. It's a very powerful thing. John 5, uh, uh, what is it? John 5, 16, 13, please, Doc. Thanks, Rich. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Hmm. That's power back. He will lead you and guide you into not some truth, all truth. 
He doesn't speak of himself. He speaks of the one who he raised from the dead. Then it goes on to say, and he will show you things to come. Do you see how valuable he is for your journey? He can show you what's to come if we spend the time with him. He can show you what's going to happen. A lot of times we, we allow the news of the moment to tell us what's to come. Or what somebody says instead of him. I'm going to kind of wrap up. Those two things, the word, communication, relationship, fellowship. Discover the word. Because by the way, you'll never understand the word of God without Holy Spirit. Never. He's the one that is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He reveals. He takes the scales from your eyes. He will show you. He will reveal to you. But if I'm not looking, he can reveal all he wants and I can miss it. want to add this to it. Thanksgiving and gratefulness fills a bottle. When you are grateful no matter what and you are thankful no matter what it kind of fills it up. Keeps you, protects you. There's a lot more I can say in this but I'm not going to. Just stand. Holy Spirit, <laughs> just want to thank you for being who Jesus said you would be to us. Just want to thank you that you know the potholes before we even get there. That you give us the wisdom. You don't take us around and you don't take us over, you take us through so that we can stand with a conviction of you saying, made it. So Holy Spirit, now, whatever the potholes are in our lives, now, whatever we feel is a pothole in our life, I thank you that you come. You fill it. You are the reign of heaven. You are peace. Oh. It's come. Got a pothole in your life, or two, or three, or more. Maybe you're, 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 kind of convinced that you're going to hit another one down the road. Just right now, say to him, thank you that when you lead and guide me, I will avoid a pothole or I will be away. But you will give me the wisdom, the guidance to navigate. If that's you right now and you need him more than ever before, just as a sign of surrender, raise your hands to him. Because that's what it means in Scripture. When we raise our hands, even in worship, it's a surrender. 
It's a surrender. To lead in God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you that you are a spirit of truth, that you are revealing new truth to us right now, that you are pulling us out. Thank you, Father, that your word is a light unto our feet. And it shows us a path forward of victory in you. And I just encourage each one of you here that maybe feel like you're in a pothole that you can't get out of. Remain behind and, and somebody can maybe give you a hand up, can pray with you, can pray with you. Maybe too you feel the Holy Spirit has, has left you and you can't sense him, you can't feel him. And it's not about a feeling, but you, you just sense that you don't know him well and you'd like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and are refreshing. Also stay behind. There will be people to pray for you, leaders to pray for you here in the front. So... Yeah, I just encourage you not to leave this morning without an encounter with him. And the freeing thought that as you walk out this door, you have been set free to navigate the path of life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tea and coffee, guys, next door. Thank you.